Pigeons 420. Mr. Grow It. And Rob from Cannabis Lifestyle TV. From the Stash Podcast. Hey, from the Stash Podcast, it's your boy Rob from CLTV, Pigeon 420, and Chris, a.k.a. Mr. Grow It. What up, y'all? What up? Hey, we got someone else We got a guest, too. Who the fuck is this? Ooh. Your boy Derek from motherfucking High Rise. You should already know. As soon as I see him immediately, you become so, like, iconic in my world. I see you everywhere just doing fucking the thing. But, man, anybody who hasn't seen him, make sure you fucking check the link that I put there in the description or the little preview you see on the screen. But, what up, G? Happy to have you here, man. Rob, what up, boys? What's going on? Thanks for having me on. Fucking A, man. Good to have I feel like you. It's Thanks been too long. I feel like we need to link up more, man. Yeah. 100%. Fucking Rona. I was going to come down and visit you, boys, but fucking Rona really threw a wrench in that one there. Yep. Oh, you guys got to come out before uh, our lease for this house is up in August, but we're going to try to go month to month after. And then if it doesn't work out, we're going to just try to find another place, but... Yeah, if you guys can make it out before August, before uh, oh, banger, up sure. on the spot, you got to check it out for sure. I can't That's believe that they've allowed a lease with how fucking hard you boys go over there, man. Holy shit. That's, That's the hard cool, part. Dude. <laughs> finding yeah. a new house, finding somewhere where we can like party and parking is the biggest problem. Like we've got this spot. We're in this like $10 million house in Beverly Hills. We have like, it's really like a $1 million house, but with a $9 million <laughs> view. Like the house is like cool, but like the view is insane and we've been throwing a bunch of events and parties here and everything's chill with music and everything it's just parking like the neighbors up the hill just hate us because we just have like fucking 100 cars parking on the street. <laughs> like, the cops, don't, the cops don't give a shit they're just like all right yeah neighbors are calling because of parking and stuff but that's a pain geez, that's a pain to think you've gotten so far and the the biggest hurdle is parking yeah right? for real well, dude, I remember, uh, you know, that's what we're talking about today, actually, is like 420 influence. And, uh, you know, as, as content creators or as influence, I mean, you're a content creator if you are an influencer, really. You're making some form of content, whether you're the person making it, you're a part of it, you're whatever you're doing, fucking pictures, that's content. And it's amazing, man. Kudos is a motherfucker to you, boys. I remember seeing you guys move into the high rise house, the, the small little place there. Maybe you modified it. It was a nice house, but just a regular fucking residential spot. And then all of a sudden, this I'm like, whoa, that's some motherfucking hustle right there, boys. Yeah, we were wow. definitely, uh, we were trapping content out of that other house. We are in like a little three-bedroom house, and we had six desktops in the master bedroom <laughs> in a circle, and we were just trapping content, dude. Like, we shot 200 brands, 250 brands in two and a half years out of that little house in Long wow. Beach. Shitty-ass balloon stained carpet and... You know, I'm literally just shooting photos by the window every single day, shooting 60 edited photos by the window. We got the boys shooting like spinner shots in the kitchen, like two and a half years, literally just trapping content. Like it's hilarious. I'm jealous. Dude. I'm jealous. Dude. But that I mean, you being amazing. the prodigy, fucking you having that already in your your blood, you know, with with your pops, obviously looking down on you, fucking having that that skill set, man. You've taken this to the next fucking level, dude. And and I think what's cool is like originally when I first saw you boys, it was more you guys as the influencers. And it's almost like you still are, but you've taken more of the CEO back end builder management approach and you've built a lot of influence underneath you guys. We're like, I mean, they've obviously done their own thing, but the teamwork makes the fucking dream work. You see like Mac Dizzle, the whole the whole crew over there, Joya and them just really making it happen with the uh, two girls, one bong. I'm going to say one blunt because, you know, your boys are the blunt. But to see the growth there i mean from day one to now of of all that it comes from that content creation and as you do it and you polish up that look and you come consistent with the content and it's going and growing that's when the influence becomes a factor and it's like what in what time did you guys notice a pivot kind of and you probably still are there because i was we're growing more and i feel like we're nowhere near anything but we're still like still working up there what point did you notice that you became influencers so to speak that the high rises is, is like kind of an influencer agency so to speak in my opinion so, it looks that way it's like i mean you've been following high rise for a while and like you've probably seen we the reason that we've had like one of the reasons we've had success is our ability to pivot it's like we don't have investors it's just you know 1700 bucks aaron put into this company like almost 10 years ago and we are really small we have a super small team so we have the ability to pivot so high rise started as the clothing company you know, back in the day. And then we started a YouTube channel like six and a half, seven years ago. And from there, we kind of built that shit up. 
Then, you know, like Mac and Joya just killed it. They fucking blew up. We got 100,000 subscribers in six months. You know, they became some of the first 420 influencers, you know, and like before that we had Strain Central, Custom Grow, Silence Tippy. You know, we maybe had five, uh, Haley 420, and then we dropped two girls, one bong, and then that shit just took off. So um, then our business kind of changed. We're doing that. We're doing a lot of YouTube content. And then... You know, Mac and Joya had their thing. Like, Mac got her DUI so she couldn't smoke in the midst of us blowing up this YouTube channel. And then, like, her and Joya broke up shortly after that. So then we're stuck with this, like, YouTube channel. And we're like, what the fuck are we going to do? And then we do the Doobie Talk podcast. But at that time, we're, like, running a bunch of merch. And it, people have no idea what the fuck we're doing. Our following followed us because of Two Girls, One Bomb, which they want to see these hot chicks just get high as fuck and act silly. Then you got me and Aaron like trying to teach people how to do fulfilled by Amazon businesses. <laughs> Marketing and hustling, grinding. Uh, that's then, how like, I our, found you boys, though, man. I love yeah, it. Yeah, our 200,000 subscribers. Like, who the fuck are these dudes? And like, from that, we get to meet cool people like Rob. We get to meet people like our boy Lee Dom, who used to work with us. Like, we do get that niche following of people who do see what we're doing. It's not going to be a giant following, but it's going to be a small niche of people that are look. We're all fucking stoners, but we're interested in business and um, doing something positive. So, we did that and then you know a year later we ended up pivoting into the agency so then when we pivoted into the agency it was me and aaron alone i'm shooting all the photos all the video aaron's just basically pimping out my work and you know doing the merch thing <laughs> making the business you know, behind the scenes basically. so we're just running that shit and then from there we kind of just started we had to be the dudes like mac and joy are off doing the weed tube like just me and Aaron, we have this agency, we have this big YouTube channel, like, we know what the fuck we're doing, like, we don't want to be the dudes, we never wanted to be the dudes, that's why we had Mac and Joya be the faces of High Rise, because we come from old skateboarding, where, you know, you don't necessarily want to be the dude in the, in, you know, like, the man all the time, you know, like, you don't want to be Nikki Diamonds, like, you just want to have the company and have other people fucking run it, and you can kind of just sit back and be humble, Unfortunately, in the age of social media is the complete wrong side, the, uh, not wrong, the other side of that where you ha you put it yourself out there, you know, this is my business, this is what we're doing, the day in the life shit, every single day with the story. So once we started the agency, Aaron and I were like, okay, well, we kind of just have to put ourselves out there, you know, like, we're doing this shit, we shot, you know, 80 plus brands the first year we had the agency, just me and Aaron, like, out of the house, like, we're doing cool shit, we're meeting people, we're going to events. We're growing this shit. We need to start putting ourselves out. So I would say when we started the agency and then when we put um, Stephen Fish on, he was like our first videographer when we threw him on and he was just great on camera and he's just hilarious. And it was just like the, the, the fucking three amigos just running around at events, just being idiots and making shit happen. So, yeah, that's probably the agency. And when we put Fish on was when, you know, we decided like, all right, we got to put our faces out there. Like, and then slowly as we grew, we got, we got Josh, we got Jackson and everybody on our, our team just like <clears throat> has like this cohesive fit, man. Like we have this team and it's just so fucking rad, dude. We just like are all just these pieces that fit into this puzzle, a bunch of degenerates that were probably told we were never going <laughs> to do anything with our lives. And Somehow, like, Fucking this a, man, team it. with these pieces and these role players we've been able to put together, like, this culture of, like, hardworking, have fun, and not too serious and creative, you know, little experience we have over here. Well, you guys are, you guys are a, kicking man. ass, and your story is inspirational, and it's literally it encompasses the journey of what it takes to create cannabis content on the internet it's you have to pivot you have to change you have to find people that are not just morons because the world is full of them particularly our community i don't know what it is Sorry, but yeah. the, the world is like or the, you know the, the fact that you've been able to bring so many like-minded great minds together speaks to itself you guys have accomplished many things it's 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 inspirational you know definitely somewhere to put our do. bar you know Thanks, yeah, and, and I feel like when you're talking about how you guys wanted to be kind of the behind the scenes, you wanted to run the business and have somebody else be the face, but you came above that and now you're putting your face out there and stuff like that. I, I can relate to that a lot because I wanted to be the behind the scenes guy. You know, a lot of my videos, if you look back, I just I'm filming my plants and I don't see my face at all. Um, and the reason why I actually hid my face was my employer. I was employed at the time. I didn't want to get canned from the job because of uh, making cannabis content or whatever. But over the years, I realized that I needed to force myself out of my comfort zone and 
be in front of the camera, right, and have my face exposed. And that helped with growth tremendously. And I think a lot of people don't really understand how much that can actually help with growth because, um, you know, you you have to have charisma. You have to have you have to be able to capture an audience, um, have them relate to you and, and so on and so forth. All those things are really important when it comes to being a 420 influence or whatever. So when you mentioned that, I can totally relate to that. And I just wanted to speak to that for a minute. Yeah, well, yeah 100%. Like, I think you said, so you got to like push yourself, you, know, you got to push the boundaries because, you know, like not all of us are, feel really comfortable on camera, but you also do realize like, yeah, we're all self-conscious and it's not bad. Like whatever, we might say some shit and we fuck up or whatever, but it's all about the intention. And, you know, it is sketchy with cancel culture and stuff. Anything could be taken out of, you know, you could take, like, <laughs> take yeah, something a few out, like, we said has been super positive, but you could take a fragment, put it on an article and it probably sounds like shit. Something we're yeah. all too familiar with. Yeah, we, yes. yeah, yeah, we understand <laughs> that, you know, and then, you know, there. I think it's, I think it's important to note too, that, it, you know, what you guys are doing has not been paved before you know if we were in no if blueprint. we were in the makeup industry if we were in the gaming industry if we were in the kitty cat video industry we we would all there would be agencies there'd be people reaching out there would be money everywhere opportunity but the reality is is that cannabis is so niche and so specific taboo and non-advertiser friendly quote unquote that you know your hustle needs to be twice as hard your grind has to, you have to do it. You know, yes, you, we have the reservations, but you know, it's, you have to battle that. And you're right. We grow from that. We become stronger because of those, those, those hurdles that we overcome. Well, dude, I mean, we've all, I'm pretty sure all of us here have had channels in social media. I know, I know all of us have here have had our shit deleted by the man or the woman, Suzanne. And it's, it's pretty fucked up where it's like, what did we do different than did we do now? And, and as influencers who decide to dive in deep and make this your business, you know, before doing, CLTV, I was in the, the agency world. I was dealing with real estate agents and fucking companies that I didn't have fun with. And I was didn't show my face, too. I literally found the dream team where I got Trey. These four of the people who fucking did nothing, they're gone. Um, and I was like, let's make this happen. CLTV, it's going to just be this person who fits this niche, this niche, this niche. And we're going to talk about all things cannabis. It'll be growing. It'll be fucking street interviews. It'll be news. It'll be entertainment, skits, da 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 And fizzled out because nobody had the energy to do it but my face was never intended ever to be a part of anything and all of a sudden i become like the star fucking player in it which is weird and i'm on all these shows i've got like around four different shows i'm on and fucking doing tons of shit and interviews everywhere but i just don't want the fame that goes with it but i want the the positive influence that comes with it like i feel like i've got a lot to say that people should hear at a certain point and i'd like to be able to impact a few people in a certain way whether that be growing better bud having more motivation getting your grind right your mind right fucking ethics things like that but sitting back behind the camera you don't always get that and but if you got a crazy good talent like it's you're, you're split in the middle Derek, because you've got fucking insanely good cinematography and photography skills but then you're really cinem like cinematic um charismatic you're, and you're a good camera. looking dude too that and then you're a fucking that. stud too so i mean and you've got this the skateboarding experience too like you've got again like influencer in another realm i mean you've got a fucking skateboard uh, your skateboard you know like that's not i don't have my own anything so that's pretty fucking tight but to to go from that industry which i guess it's a comparable industry you'd get sponsors the sponsors give you free gear usually some may pay you it's a little harder to get to pay but you're not getting advertiser money for going to skate you're not getting crazy comp money you know you're going to a skate comp and getting 100k like not as common you know what i'm saying unless you're like way up and you're doing the shit constantly all the fucking time but it's like that's where it's tough for a lot of people in this industry. How do you make money here? What do you do? And it's like affiliate programs. That's one thing. But sponsors in your own products are really the key thing. But you got to have influence for that to even matter. You know, how yeah, does it, you know, if you don't mind me asking without getting into details of the nitty gritty and the numbers, how do, how has the, the high rise team been able to monetize their brand since starting? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like you said with skateboarding and with the sponsorship model and skateboarding that's exactly what we modeled this after like as a skateboarder as a skateboarder former skateboarder whatever like the marketing in skateboarding is the sponsored skateboarder right like as a skate as a sponsored skateboarder you are a marketing asset so you have like your pros who get paid they have their names on the boards whatever they can get royalties or whatever which still ain't shit. everybody's broke and then you have your AMs, you get paid, you don't have your name on a board, you might, you know, if you're out for a really good company, you get paid a couple hundred bucks a month or whatever. Then you have your flow dudes, they just get free shit and they, they're they not on the team that might 
get to travel if they're getting tested out to get on the team, but they get free stuff. And you have like your rep flow dudes. They're in, say, <clears throat> you're in like kid who writes for Yeah Board Shop or Uprise in Chicago, like the Midwest rep for Adidas or whatever, like hook this kid up with like a pair of shoes or two a month. So he's rep flow. So we basically kind of just like modeled our shit after that where, you know, we had our pros, like we had like Mac Dizzle and Joya and like the Queen Sins and the, the main, you know, influencers with, you know, 200 plus thousand or whatever. Then we have our like mid range. Then we have like our aspiring super micro influencers that, you know, these people only have a couple thousand and, but they're, su- they really want to be influencers and they're putting in the work to be that influencer. We want to invest in them. So we'll hook them up. But um, that's how we kind of base it off skateboarding and the tiers of influencers that we've looked at this since day one before influencer was even a thing. Like that's how we kind of modeled our structure off of the same thing as skateboarding. But in terms of like monetizing our brand with high rise as influencers, it's or as us being influencers or whatever, like we are just starting to do that right now. Like we've been building the equity of high rise and just our value by creating value for other people, like as a service, you know, it started as the clothing company, but once we went into the agency, it was, and even before our agency, we were doing merch for people. Like that was our main thing as a clothing company. We didn't take money from high rise. We had our separate business called diverse, and we would just do merch for everybody so we could pay ourselves to do that and we could just keep putting money back into high rise and not take any out. So that's how we stayed afloat all these years. When we turn into the agency, it's all built on value. It's built on what do you need to help with? We're going to fucking help you grow. Whether it's your brand, whether it's a personal brand, whether it's the influencer, whether it's a dispensary, whatever. You need merch. You need influencer marketing campaigns. You need content. You need video what the fuck do you need like full service agency you got it all you know what i mean so we built our shit by just creating value for people who are really inexpensive price and just over delivering every single time so that word of mouth spreads and you can't not see the high rise tagged in a fucking product shot or something or influencer or whatever like it's just market share it's just visibility fluency you know so we just over deliver and it wasn't until recently that we're like, okay, let's try to like monetize our, we have so much value, but we're just cranking out like content for everybody else. But, you know, we just went to Vegas, me and Aaron, we're dry, we don't get that much time together because we're just grinding so hard. So we drove together in, to Vegas for four hours. We're just chopping it up with whatever. Smart. And it's now we just have like so much shit spread out all over the board. We just need to figure out how to connect these dots. You know, we have so much value. There's just there's just like monetary value with this value. Now, how do we just connect this dot to this dot? We're already doing it. Now we can get paid for it, you know? Um, but now recently, yeah, like we get posts. We kind of just throw it in like with, with our IG. We'll be like, okay, we'll give you shout outs. We'll give you whatever. It's kind of goes along with like the base camp sponsorships for the brands we work with. But we're going to just bring our podcast back and... We're gonna get sponsorship for the podcast, hopefully. Yeah, man. You know what I mean, because there's so many, uh, so much content we can create out of like a 45 minute episode. You know, like 10 small micro pieces that we could throw on IG, and we have all the different platforms to share it with. Oh or, yeah, like know, the Gary so. V approach. You already know. Exactly. You guys mind kill it with that. You, you so guys. Just right now, we just we have so much brand work that you know there's not a lot of stuff, not a lot of time to do like the super fun like high rise TV YouTube hijinks and like i want to do a podcast more than anything because we just have it's pretty crazy what we have going on here you know and we really need like a more in-depth way to share what's going on besides just posting on stories and you know like yeah i need podcasts more podcasts (laughs) are the way to go today's day and Mm -hmm. age you know what i mean like it's it's taken over you know i think what you just said speaks a lot to your brand's integrity and um uh uh, you know just you invested in the individual you've seen talent you invested in those individuals without the concern of money and honestly your numbers your growth and you as people are, are going to benefit so much more because again you've surrounded yourself with greatness with great people and i, I often what gets lost is people go the other way they go hustling for the dollar and they and rather they forget that the people that they're bringing with them aren't on that same mindset. They're, they're either there for other reasons or no reason at all. 
And uh, you, you guys are killing it, man. And, and, and this is so humbling to hear you speak this way because I can hear it, man. You, you guys, you guys have a lot of well, great intentions, boys, great intentions, and it's it's it's, it's, great... it's good to see that our community is built like this. Well, okay. I was just going to say, Aaron had a great interview. How I stumbled on them first was an interview with him talking about how they were flipping merch on a podcast, and he was talking to somebody. It was like some sort of interview on maybe Buzz something. I don't even remember, dude. This was some lady, and just how humble he was about the numbers they were at and everything and then again talking with these guys for a while just how like low-key on i'm like it's just like us they're just a california version with long hair my mm -hmm. hair short you know big difference but we skateboard, skateboard up here in canada shit. too i broke yeah, we my skated. arm on a skateboard <laughs> yeah. i used to i could drop him i was decent you know what i'm saying i wasn't a pro but point is is like it growing the brand and staying humble and being an influencer are really hard to do because as people grow their brand and they get more fans and they get more influence the ego comes with it and like now I'm getting people stopping me at grocery stores and fucking different events and be like, Rob, a picture. I'm like, okay. Like, it's, it feels kind of awkward, but it's like, I would never, I'm going to let it, I'm going to try my damnedest and never let it get to my head because like, I'm just like these people. I just took the investment to grab a camera and document what I'm doing and, and be myself and share what I'm doing. And if we can be that, that influence to their life, not just the influence so we can get dollars from brands and sponsors and shit. But that's huge to me, like I said, to impact the world in a positive way. Because I felt like I couldn't do that from behind the screen. I'd have to write scripts and shit and, and make a scene of something different than what it is. But I got a lot to say. That's why I got so many fucking shows and interrupt people all the time. People, the comment sections let me know that. And uh, it's just like, <laughs> overall, man, the, the, to see what you guys are doing, man, is, is it's right aligning with what we're doing with Seal Media, too. We've kind of grouped together here as Trio and, and some more people on the back end. And it's, it's, there's nobody doing it. So it's, it's hard to see what's the example of the best way to pivot? How do you go about monetizing it? How do you go about making this fun and continually grow? And also having a team that will work on the back end to keep you growing while you're trying to do other things. Like I'm making content all the fucking time now and I'm, I'm the guy on the camera all the time. So like we're live every night on Pigeon's Twitch, fucking late night doing a show, live all the time on From The Stash, Cannabis Lifestyle twice a week, um, doing stuff with Trey for Elevated Chef, got an MMA show I'm bringing back. I mean, all sorts of shit, dude. That Top Buds we're doing gonna start doing live top buds but i feel like i'm not overwhelmed because i've built up the team that can make it so all i have to do is just focus on content 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 ideas strategy content content and it's it's fun and if you're having fun while you're doing it that's when it's good i feel like people look at this influence thing like, i gotta make, get paid i gotta get money and trust me that whole process the path to making money will fucking suck if you're not making money you will be depressed and quit and be done with it you'll get an affiliate program through amazon whatever make three dollars in a month and say well, I think all of our job. stories, all of our stories are very similar in terms of that. We had to have alternative jobs, careers, ideas, passions to get to this point. This point didn't pay. So many of us, like I, I six, seven years I did this before I even made a hundred dollars. So it's like, you know, I, 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 I you, you have to be able to find this motivation. I'm curious that we all stay really busy. You're in California, Derek. What do you, what do you do for free time? What do you do to unwind and relax out there? Um... Probably like you you, you got to have free time. You got to find some free time. Know, the right? bag, I, like, the hands moving. I'm pretty, yeah, exactly. I'm pretty good at like, I'm like fucking the oldest one here. So like, I'm pretty good. <laughs> and scared. it's like my second career, you know what I mean? So I'm pretty good at trying to keep balance with my life. So personally, like before we went on, I did fucking smoked half this joint and like did some, like 30 minutes of yoga on the deck right here, like just to get my fucking mind right. And then I like... Pretty much only have like one day half a day a week to like do what i want to do and i'll just go fucking work out in my backyard i have like Sweet. fucking punching bags and shit so i'll just go do that and then i still work on the weekends but i'll just like watch fights and just lay horizontal and like edit you know what i mean like edit photos and shit because i could just literally edit photos in my sleep so i kind of just do that maybe like once a month i'll still hit up the skate park just make sure i still have like my basic shit in case i ever need to fucking skate in front of somebody and not like, <laughs> um, aren't you a professional like i used to do that once upon a time <laughs> yeah to make sure i got all like my stock shit there and then um yeah man i'll just i don't know my life is just like at the point where it's like so busy and i'm so like old and tired and i genuinely just in, like love what i do you know like i could we're got done working yesterday and like josh is like let's fucking watch a movie so he put scarface on and he's just like fucking stop working fool and i'm like on my phone and i have all these dope photos that i've fucking shot for all these brands but then i'm like running them through different apps where i can like animate them and shit like that <laughs> yeah. i don't I know it's like 
yeah, it's just fun, like experimenting, you know, it's just like constantly be, being creative. I need to definitely like turn my mind off of that shit and be better at balancing like emails and all that shit. But um, yeah, it's just constant creation, man. It's like kind of like a problem, but. Uh, well, or not, you know, I, I, I think I feel I think I feel you, you know, it's like it's not yeah. work. Yeah, I, I started yeah, doing content creation passion. full time in August and I haven't worked a day since, you know, it's been it's been nonstop just it's i've never been busier in my life but i'm not working i like it's so much fun that i get out of this and it's you know i don't consider it work balance is key but i also get a zen to come down sit in front of you know it's horrible to just to say premiere pro and kind of just you know just get the flow going get the music going to the beat you know it's it's refreshing mm -hmm. well I'm like chris you you worked eight years in like the corporate kind of world in the corporate space like does it feel like work at all in this sense because you're kind of like still doing administrative shit for yourself and things like that but like you're passionate about this shit too i assume correct yeah i, I mean it, it's still work right it may not it may be something that we're enjoying and that we're doing um you know that it doesn't feel like work but technically it still is work and i think we do need to continue to speak yeah, and, and sure say that it is working, work guys. because we're not to take it out there are people that look at us look at 420 influencers and they say these guys do nothing. They just smoke weed all day. There's like this, um, you, you know, behind the scenes consensus where, where people just think that we don't do anything at all when there really is a grind to it. Um, you know, editing all day, being on these live streams all day, all That's this is list. work. Yeah, there you go. Check Filled up calendar right there. Full, baby. I got one open day. Um, those open days are jujitsu days. <laughs> That's all those are. It's open because it's jujitsu. <laughs> But going from the corporate world, right, nine to five job, board, I think I was working like 60 plus hours a week. I worked at Amazon for eight years, worked my way up to management, um, working with worldwide operations, all that stuff. And they run you to the ground. And all that stuff I learned there, I was able to apply a good amount here. And just being in a better mindset to where I had that hustle mentality. And I know that I don't ever want to go back to that. So I need to be self-disciplined. Um, you know, as a 420 influencer, content creator, whatever we want to call it, right? I know some people hate the word influencer, but uh, as a content creator, you really do have to be self-disciplined. And uh, it's I enjoy it much better. It's not for everybody. It's definitely not for everybody. I know a whole bunch of people who they want to do it. It seems like a good idea in their head, but they just there's no way they can execute that way because they just don't have that self-discipline. And they're all over the place mindset-wise. And maybe they're just a planner. They just plan, 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 and they have all these ideas, but there's no execution behind it. So you got to really have that complete package uh, when it comes down to this, in my opinion. So. Well, and you don't realize that the amount, again, the amount of work. So prior to this agency work, I was still grinding. I'm still, I was doing 70 hours on average a week just because I could work at nights in my own office whenever I want to. But... I'm doing like 80 hours a week doing this, but I'm not stressed out as much because I enjoy what I'm doing. That's the difference. It's like, it's my work environment is better. It, I found my passion. You know, initially I thought I was going to be a musician of some kind. Didn't work. Didn't work. I should have moved to eight mile, you know? And then, so in this case, now I'm like, fuck it, content creator. And in the content creator side, it's like, you're just a content creator until you start making money. Then you are a professional content creator or then you're an influencer. Then you're whatever you want to be. But it's like, you can be a content creator right now. You can start with, with boofy-ish kind of quality and make it fucking happen and start. Because if you look at the very first Cannabis Lifestyle episode, it looks good because I already was making music videos and shit before then. You look at High Rise stuff, Derek's got the fucking eye and the skill for it, man. He's like, so sometimes, and even like uh, Mr. Canuck or, or C. to Stone, you'll see these people have totally different skill sets behind them that they brought into this. So sometimes it's not necessarily as easy as it look one would think that it's just hop in grab a camera whoop 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 but it is not that way i explained to a, a buddy recently about the equipment that i bought he was in here checking it out and he was like jesus christ you got like twenty thousand dollars worth of shit here i was like it's accumulated over time but yeah man realize what i need to step up what i need to make it easier for my life what i need to do for technology for this and that like it's an investment but that's why five six years into it i've done that but i've made enough money that i can justify it I, at one point i couldn't do that now but uh, like for me my influence isn't just from uh, sponsors like to make money with it. It's like my own products. If people trust me and they know me, they like what I do. They're gonna probably buy this tea, you know, because they feel like they're still not successful. You know what I'm saying? Or they might get my course if they want to learn how to grow from how I do or things like that. But the only reason they've done it is because the influence that I've brought and they trust my what I'm saying. They know that I'm not gonna be some slouch or some liar because I have positive influence and impact on them. So to utilize that, you could have a micro audience of a thousand people. 
And if a hundred people end up fucking with you, that could really blow your brand up. It, it, it's crazy how that works. But I mean, even look at numbers at Twitch. You see, like, Pigeons is knocking out of the fucking park. And compared to his YouTube channel, it seems like nothing. But financially, actually, he's probably doing way fucking better on Twitch than he is on YouTube. I don't so make any money on YouTube. That's the point. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, there's a, a, a people have a misconception on, on being a content creator, and you got to be a million, two million, three million followers. You got to have the best everything and the top notch. It's like you can really start basic as shit. You just kind of you're gonna need some personality. You're gonna need consistency. That's well, a Derek huge said it. Thing. Derek said it. They, they they're willing to invest in an individual who has one, two, three thousand subs, but shows heart and hustle of someone who is is in this for do or die. You know. Well, yeah. It's a marathon, baby. It's a marathon. Discipline, like Mitchie said. passion. You know what I mean? Like authenticity. Like what you're saying. Like you don't need millions of followers. Like I know influencers with eight hundred thousand fucking followers don't have a car, can't pay their bills. What's mm -hmm. wrong with you? You know what okay. I mean? Like if any of us eighty thousand, we'll fucking be buying houses and shit. You know what I mean? So it's like it's, it's, it's all about the the authenticity, and it's all about like just being yourself because. You know, we know, I know people, I know girls that like, they're in the industry, they're not influencers, but they're in the industry. They go to all the events, you know, 23 year old girls. Every time I see them, they're sitting at a table with like four CEOs of fucking licensed brands. They only have 3000 followers, but those 3000 followers are like the most connected people in fucking California cannabis, you know? And then I know influencers with 230,000 followers that have no Rolodex in real life. You know what I mean? Like, cool, you got, and going back to like the authentic authenticity of just being yourself, like you'd rather have 8,000 followers of people that fuck with you that are like passionate, cool people that just match your personality, or you could have 500,000 followers of just fucking trolls and like, you know, I, I'm seeing some of our good friends right now that have big followings, you know, with like, they have like a younger audience, Gen Z following and anything they post, you know, they gain this following and all this support and all this shit, but then they post one thing and their followers start attacking them. The Takashi 69 syndrome. Cancel culture the shit. It controls and the cancers. It's, it's the quality of your follow followers. You could have the big number all you want but you could it's the quality of those followers you know and like you guys are saying like or what does tim ferris say like a thousand follower rule or whatever like if you have like a thousand true fans you can fucking make a living off your shit. if you have a thousand people that are willing to transfer this platform to that platform you're gonna have a live event a thousand people are gonna show up if you have a thousand true fans you can fucking make a living. So we don't need to make that million. You don't need to buy 381,000 followers and fake likes and then forget to buy comments with your fake likes so everybody in the fucking world knows that shit's fake. It's like, you know what I mean? And then start a clothing brand. Bro, we know people who have like these fake CEO fools, you know, that like take photos and just, just the corniest shit ever. Like the Ty Lopez's. The fake yeah, Ty Lopez's. but like, Oh my gosh, even like we know some like cannabis ones of these dudes, or we don't know them, we like work with them. They literally will like buy the fucking 500,000 followers, they'll buy the 3,200 like uh, comments to go with that, and then they'll respond to all the comments. But of course, each account is like three photos, like Bangladesh, like account, yeah. virtual person account. But then there's so much mental illness that they think, I'm popping, I'm gonna start a clothing brand, mm. and it's like. You're starting a clothing brand because you bought these fucking followers and then you bought these comments and then you think that you're that cracking because did you forget you bought those and then you start a clothing brand and you can't even sell 36 fucking And now you need to buy your own clothing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh dude, boy. anybody listening, <sighs> please do not go that route. Don't do that. <laughs> it's it's like the fake followers. rappers, the SoundCloud rappers back in the day who was like just buying all their views and listens and it's like, Go and try to sell tickets when you go somewhere and see how that works. Dude. It's your empty venue, Playboy. You don't gotta yeah, be the, the There are a lot of fake brands and um, you know fake people in the industry, and I think kind of going back to what you said, Derek, about over delivering. I think you can kind of expose the people that aren't faithful and the people that are fake in a sense, right? Because if you're over delivering, how are they reacting to that? Are they excited? Are they happy? Are they trying to deliver value back to you, or are they just trying to take advantage of you? 
So you can kind yeah. of see it at that point. Um, and I totally agree with that. If you're over, if you're over delivering and uh, really trying to do your best for the brand, you'll know whether or not you want to mess with that brand long term or not, because you, you'll sure. know how they react to that. Um, yeah, that, that's huge for sure. And just I mean, eating pretty- shit too, just like, like really putting your ego and your pride aside because everybody you work with, not everybody you work with is going to be cool and have the same communication style. And most people let personal shit affect how they treat someone else. So like we get treated like shit and we're every, people are rude to us more often than not. And we just eat shit and we'll we're like, we could literally just give them a laundry list of receipts, but we're just like, okay, cool. We'll fucking reshoot it. Like whatever to make the client happy. You like, the gnarliest amount of disrespect that we receive oh, over here. You wouldn't world. believe the way that fucking people talk to us. And we're just like, just to maintain a relationship and have high rise, not, you know, just have a good reputation and shit. We just literally let people disrespect us so much. It's like outrageous, but that's, you just gotta, obviously there's a balance to that, but, but it's, it's the growth period too. Like, Do you think- I, like the media side of things, the agency is, is still, in its growth period, even though you guys are fucking blowing up and doing some dope, dope, dope shit. Like, and now I can tell when I see something, I'm like, that's high rise. Like, cause I'm seeing enough of it. I'm like, okay, that's that flare right there. But it's, it's the, like the growth period. And I, I, that's a big reason I got at the agency world is I'm like, bitch, I didn't start this to have 10 bosses. Don't you come at me sideways. I'll fuck you up when we get done with this. Like a boss that <laughs> doesn't even pretend. know how to edit telling you how to fucking edit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. or, or in, in being personally disrespectful. I don't care if we we if we can. It's okay to disagree, but being disrespectful is the problem. That was a quote I saw mm-hmm. by Lewis Howes today. Don't be disrespectful, you know. But you can disagree. Do you, so do you find like you, you, do you th- you think that's mainly because you're a cannabis uh, creator, if you will, or influencer, or member of the community, or do you think it's just maybe your side? Just it, yeah, is it just this the life, the industry? Um, or, or do you uh, find, and because you're cannabis focused, do you find any outside? Not, I don't want to use the word discrimination, but um, a negative impact. Not so much. Are all your clients in the industry? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like everything we focus on, and like anybody who approaches us outside, it's like, okay, well, we shoot weed shit, so you want us to shoot whatever, like. And they're cool. At this point, yeah. we're like, you're going to get what you're going to get. Like, we're going to do our best, <laughs> and like, if it looks better than what's on your fucking feed, like what's the problem? Like right. you're literally right. posting bloody iPhone photos and we give you like dope ass flat lays. You want to complain because like, whatever, like still looks a thousand times better than your shit. And we gave you a good price. Like, like this goes along with what I'm about to say. It's like, everybody's just fuck crazy. So yeah. clearly we work with fucking 400 brands and like, we have an idea of what we're doing, but then we talk to an owner and this happens seven out of 10 times. We talk to an owner, owner's like, fuck yeah, you guys got value. Let's ramp my brand up, whatever, whatever, whatever. Whenever we just like work with the owner, it's fucking A1. All of a sudden they're like, here's this fucking 21 year old kid straight out of college or just worked at famous stars and straps and they're gonna head our marketing shit. And then all of a sudden they just throw a wrench in this relationship with us and it's like, they don't know who we are. They're trying to like puff their chest out and prove that like I'm in the cannabis industry and fucking making us jump through hoops when their owner was the one that's just like let them do what they want. Literally, that's probably happens like four out of five times we work with brands. We there's like we call it gatekeepers. We just get gatekeepers. And it's somebody that's on the other side that's doing nothing, a social media manager. If you're a social media manager, you should also be able to shoot content. Why are you paying somebody to shoot your content and then you're paying someone to post the content that that person shot? It's like in skateboarding back in the day, there was team managers that would take people on trips and then you would take the photographer and videographer with the team manager. As time went on, they just merged it. It's just like the team manager should be the a photographer or videographer. You're killing two birds with one stone. You know what I mean? Like the team manager just sitting at the skate spot while the dude's skating and just booking hotels and driving. It's like the fucking photographer videographer could do all that shit. You know, so it's like, why are you paying this person to run your social media and this person to shoot it? It's so easy to just have that be one job. So we're we're shooting all the content. We have a a social media manager that just is doing nothing but posting our shit. But if they post our shit and everything goes good, why are they, why do they have a job? So they start telling the boss, they need to do this. And I don't like this model or her fingernails are fucking 
too long or fucking blah, 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 blah. And it just, you know, they're just creating problems so that they look like they're doing their job. But it's this person's never built anything. That social media manager's never built a brand. They've never fucking done shit. They've never shot photos. So like for us, it's like we built fucking all these dope brands. We've helped build some of the biggest brands in cannabis. We built our brand. Like we have an idea what we're doing. Like why do we have this 22 year old fucking kid that smokes once a month telling us how to run our content? You know what I mean? So that's Thanks, man. probably one of the biggest problems. Or we have an owner we're dealing with. This owner is just like so stoked on us. Come to all of our parties. I want to work with you. Blah, 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 blah sign the invoice and then they bring on their partner and their partner has no idea who we are and the partner is just straight disrespectful and then the other owner is trying to and it's just like we're just getting to the point where it's like do we just not increasing yeah we yeah exactly either we just like up the price or it's just like honestly we just have so many so much value and we have such a crazy network here at this house and everybody that comes through it's just like maybe disrespectful we ain't going to share this shit with you you know what I mean? Dude, like, hey, fucking men, man. That's, you're paving the way. You it's either you're with disrespect. or you're against. You know, it's like we don't, you get to a certain point where you, you got to eat the shit, but you can choose which plate it's on and which one you're going to take, you know? Yeah. Like, well, not mm-hmm. just that. It's like, uh, like Beanie Siegel said, it's either get down or lay down, motherfucker. Because the, realistically, yeah. these brands will disappear because their competitor is going to work with you. And the competitor is probably going to be a nicer person who's like authentically wanting to grow the business. And if they do have a marketing team, they're going to be like, hey, these are these guys who are fucking stoked to work with, who are really making it happen. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's the big difference between being a quality person and having ethics with skills versus being just some skilled, talented person. Because I don't care how much skills and talent you have. If you're a dickhead, I'm not going to work with you. It really ruins the whole thing. Like, I went on a purge of my clients for Agency World because I got sick of it. They were just disrespectful to me, calling me on Sundays, calling me names sometimes. I'm like, one dude mentioned my gap. Like, the gap has been a hot topic on YouTube. Right. But personally, <laughs> when you come at me with the gap, personally brings like, out his eyes. If you ask I'm me. like, motherfucker, it's the London look. <laughs> so instead, I ended up just raising my price heavily, and that's how I fired him. And I was like, all right, well, this month, you know, recurring is actually going up about ten, you know, like ten thousand. I was like, yeah, like that's insane. I'm like, well, not- uh, you know, <laughs> supply and demand. You know, we, our team is, is we got a lot of stuff going on, and like, oh, we're not going to be able to. Like, cool, thanks, mutual. Peace out. I but, demand greatness and you're supplying asshole. You well, That's what it comes down to. So that's what pivoted me into more of, of this kind of stuff. But like you guys have a hybrid of it, man. And I think we'll have to talk more post podcast about that. But there's there's a beautiful side of things is where you guys are the eye and now becoming the talent. So you, you can create the talent, the super high quality professional shit that you would hire a company to come and do, but then also have the talent. So you're literally developing a team of influencers. And you guys may consider yourselves as not Taking the face of the, the brand, game. but I look at it as high rise, the brand, the high rise team is like, you've got, you know, Mac and at home girl and the squad, like all the other people, they're all high rise, but like high rise is you two. Like you guys could be cartoon characters, you know, yeah. like I know you no, two as the main sure. people, but it's because that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and it's all still the team, but everybody in the same with seal media is like this Rob, but we have cannabis lifestyle TV, pigeons 420. Chris, Mr. Girl, you know what I'm saying? We all have our own entities, but we all collaborate and work together under the same brand. And that's what mm-hmm. makes us the powerhouse and working as, you know, influencers using our influence collectively. Like, fuck these big companies. They don't want to work with us. They don't want to act this way. They don't this and that. It's like, we're getting the influence and more of the power in that sense because the community's with us because we are with the community. We're like, mm-hmm. like middle management in a sense where it's like, listen, dickhead, you're going to act that way. Well, trust me, the employees are going to fucking strike. They're going to strike. They're not going to do this. And in this case, it's like our people we work with, man, like is the fucking community. And if you're going to act like a dick, I'm very vocal. And everybody knows when I don't like a company, they hear the name specifically and sometimes the rep. So if a company's going to act that way, man, they're going to hear about it. And we'll have bad influence in that sense. So just come correct and treat everybody like you'd want to be treated. Doesn't that make sense? Isn't that somewhere written somewhere? <laughs> Do one to some <laughs> other people yeah. as others like. Yeah, I saw it carved on a tree one time. Yeah, I think it was some stone. No, but it's yeah, all man, about I think, uh, it's, it's all about 100 percent the money a little bit and how lucrative it can be and how some companies don't actually understand uh the money that it actually costs to do some of these promotions so i came from um doing comedy videos before this right and there are some influencers that had youtube channels that have five hundred thousand, a million subscribers right and they're getting hit by hit up by brands that are offering them 20 30, 40,000, upwards of $70,000 
for a 30 second shout out within the video. That's it. Um, so it all depends on views, right? Views is a big, a big piece of that. Now, what I'm finding is that these folks, you know, that doesn't really relate to the cannabis industry as much. Everybody just kind of wants things for free. They want free shout outs. They'll give you a free product. They're not willing to dish out that amount of money. Some of these larger brands now are, I feel like. I feel like it's transitioning to that point where these bigger brands are dishing out the appropriate amount of money. Because um, you're comparing uh, influencer marketing online with TV ads, for example, right? And the price there and so on and so forth. So... Derek, have you had any issues with brands just not paying or do you see extensive pay like that I kind of just mentioned, um, you know, on the cannabis side of things or, or what? I don't see like shit, the 70 grand for like a 30 second spot. I wish we had that, but I could just like Soon. from from what I understand and like the most of the brands that we work with, their budgets are not big for, for marketing, for social media marketing. Like someone who we always say is done the best job of it. And every, I would say majority of our clients that come in here are like, ah, oh, who do you guys like? What do you guys want your shit to look like? Or whatever, when we have a meeting with them, everybody says Steezy. And we're like, all right, well, Steezy is, use, is literally spending hundreds of thousands of dollars each month just on social media marketing. Yeah, that's why you say, that's why they say their name. $3,500, couple posts, two posts, four fucking stories, times, I don't know how many influencers they're paying that shit. It, 100 minimum? I don't know. I know all these influencers. So that's like what steezy's doing and then we have brands that were like two grand for a month's worth of content and they're like that's way too much i'm like you're out of your mind like that's <laughs> more than one post a day for two grand like whoever you're paying right now should be doing that already your social you know what i mean um so we have a lot of brands they want to do that but that's like i don't know the exact numbers for steezy i'm just trying i'm trying to put them together in my head but they got a giant budget that's why they're winning that's why they're fucking killing it. That's why they've built this crazy community. So also, goes. they've got this straight niche. They've got like a great minority following. Hispanic and Asian community fucks with Steezy so hard, you know? So that's like a whole nother niche that they tap into and in the streetwear niche. And I mean, that's most brand. So we facilitate a lot of deals and it's just like, some people charge a shit ton of money and you know, you can get some micro influencers for like 75 bucks, do some shit. And we find more success with micro influencers, you know, like you were saying earlier with the millions of follower fit T chicks or whatever, and us being niche cannabis, like you could go hit up one of the giant, you know, top fives, but their inbox is full of deals and it's just another deal. And their followers know that it's just another fucking brand deal. That's the key right there. It in the fucking closet that's just stuffed with shit that they're never going to touch again where you can hit the micro influencer with three to eight to thirty thousand followers and pay way less and get way more posts out of it and they're going to actually fuck with your product because they want to act like an influencer and they want to be posting the fucking shit and tagging the brand maybe you pay them for four posts maybe they post eight times that month and then the next month they post a couple more times just because they want to continue using that product also because they don't have a closet full of products also because you know what i mean like they no, we want to still there they want to make the content whereas the, the the tier one influencers like i gotta make this content you know so i don't know that's what we tell brands it's like just go with the micro like unless you have a real relationship with the macro otherwise i don't know like we have one brand like they try to slide into this tier one influencers thing for 400 bucks for the full month and then come give a speech. And I'm like, dude, like that's disrespectful. First, I have like 700,000 followers, man. Like you're going to try to get a month's worth of a camp, a campaign for 400 plus I haven't come do a whole event. I'm like, I wouldn't even Good ask luck. that. Yeah. Good luck. yeah I'm saying, I consider myself a micro and I probably wouldn't yeah. do that either. Yeah. Uh, look so, <laughs> so, but I, I don't know how, like, even I'm in Canada and I know we deal with a lot of the same brands internationally, but I just, I, I feel as a creator, my value is under appreciated the, the value from a company. When, when I, when I throw a price out there, it, there's like this haggling that has to go on 
when in reality I've al like these are deals that I've made already. These are numbers that I've worked out, I've flushed out, I've I've worked this to a T, and I feel like this is my value. And then these guys are like, well, no, 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 we're gonna send you a light. I was like, no, oh, yeah. I have a closet hmm, full of lights you. that I am never gonna use. This yeah. is the problem. Like this is the thing. It's like I I, I don't want to, and and I do feel like a lot of these companies. They say they don't have a budget for social media marketing, but they're blowing it on yellow pages or they've got they're they're posting on forums or something like there's High they, they're, they're in the they're in the they're in the wrong no, place. You're in the wrong place. You're spending getting your name attached to and for any four of the people on this screen right now would be incredible for a brand uh, just in that right. Um, and I, and I think that that gets undervalued. You know, I'm, I'm a small creator probably one of the smaller of the four of us and I, I have put brands on the map on my own so you, you know it's i i just i think i feel like our value is often underappreciated that free gear is thrown a lot you know, i come from a little bit of, like i said the agency world so like i do get a little ballsy with these companies where i'm just like i throw out a larger number because i know we're negotiating down but it's it's more of a sense that like once they they don't see my value and i'm very picky like i look at how they treat me the ethics of the company i'll look into them of course and then the product at a certain point of course that's important and then last is really the pay but if the pay is even an argument like if i gotta you know finagle this shit, i'm i don't i literally just leave them i'm done like i we we're just dealing with something for top buds and like they were trying to just lower increase the amount of content lower the amount of money i'm like no are you serious like i already gave you a discount because pigeons is cool with you i'm not going to do that now and it I've done that before. Like I literally worked with another company because of the influence from P where he was like, these guys are cool. Fuck with them. And they're a great company. And I got a great relationship with them, but it's and like, they never paid they me a dime. Him. It well, was no, all love. That's no, that's what up. I mean. They paid all... me and they're going to now they're going to, well, no, it was no. That's what, that's what I mean though. It's like, it, it's not about money either. It's value. I was appreciated by this company. You know what I mean? They, they were willing to shout my name out in their own posts, you know? And yeah, I was young, younger in my, my career, but I, I, the money isn't everything. It's, it's the value. They saw my value and you know, yeah, they didn't pay it in money, but that I, I'm not big on money. I, I'm but big if on you your didn't word. Push it though at that point. You no. know what I'm saying? It's not like you were throwing that out there. If you were throwing it out there, they turned it down. That'd be different. That's what I, I feel it's disrespect. It's like, so you don't see the value. Of, I, I'm going to make you money, but you just want to give me a fucking 5% commission if I get them to use the link that could get my YouTube video taken down. <laughs> okay. That works. That works really well. It's like, all right, and then do this, this, and this. And I deal with companies, again, come from the agency world. I'm like, hey, we'll have you on our website with a backlink. And like, we don't want the backlink. We just want a YouTube video that says this, this, and this. I'm like, What? You don't want to, like, I'm trying to help them and Taylor or like, they're like, we just want a review. And I'm like, listen, the reviews don't do nearly as good on our channel. What works good. They're like, nah, 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 I don't care. We want the review. I'm like, okay. All right. Well, now it's way more money because my audience isn't going to get value in this. Because if my audience doesn't get value, then I'm not getting value. I don't give a fuck about the dollar amount. I'm charging you more now. So I literally like increased my amount tenfold because I don't want to do reviews. And then when somebody wants it, it's like, all right, well, then it's going to be extremely valuable to me. And I'm going to do a cool giveaway afterwards fuck it but it's 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 really that mutual thing it's got to be mutually beneficial and i feel like now at this point in our careers all of our careers we are the a side you know what i'm saying we're the mayweathers here baby and and they can come at us a little bit more like the pauls or the fucking mcgregors because i feel like in this sense yeah they bring value of course but we bring the most value we are the middleman to the community we are the reason why they are able to get in and integrate into this community otherwise they'll have to infiltrate and sneaky get their way into it and that's not the way that this community works the cannabis community is fucking rough and there's yeah. a lot of great people but there's some shitbirds and those shitbirds will let you know like very very heavily they'll let you know and they'll put you on blast and you'll see yourself in reddit and forums and all these places so you got to come correct that's exhibit you know uh, yeah to piggyback off what you're saying like so content creators and bud tenders are the middlemen and women to this community 100 percent getting your product seen, educating consumers, whatever. Like some brands prefer to really pump in, pump attention into bud tenders. Totally cool. Bud tenders, the fucking link. Other brands just go straight to influencers, but those two are key. Now also to go along with what you're saying, just dealing with all these marketing directors or whatever, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Like 
half of them are fucking boomers, half of them are nepotism, just getting in there because they fucking know somebody, whatever, you know, maybe, and this is why our, you know, the high rise community, it's just a bunch, we do our hijinks and our dumb shit, and then we create value B2B, but then I'm also constantly trying to like, educate and inspire our followers who are all passionate cannabis consumers into getting a job in the cannabis community. Like all of our, cons- all of our followers know who all the influencers are. They know who all the brands are. They know who the people in the industry, they know stories, you know, who fucking jungle boys used to have this blah, 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 blah. Right. Like that's value. Like people working at these corporate cannabis companies don't even fucking smoke weed like straight up. Yeah. It- Bad. We just got back really from do. a fucking Vegas trade show. Horrible experience. Like, bad. Damn. Um, so yeah, it's like maybe in the future, you know, we're trying to inspire these kids. So in the future, hopefully, these marketing directors are people who are former content creators. You know what I mean? People who understand what we're doing or what the content creators are doing. You know, so that middleman between the brand and the content creator there's a little bit more understanding instead of somebody who did marketing at fucking famous stars or Tilly's or whatever, that's coming over here telling us what to do with cannabis content. It seems like the like, place too. those types of behavior. You know, dude, I know, dude, trust me, dude, we're going to get on TikTok. <laughs> exactly. So hopefully, you know, marketing directors in the future should be, you know, queen sin in the future should be a marketing director for steezy or some shit. You know what I mean? Like Angela Mazzanti, she's, Dude, Angela Zanti's the shit. She's top model in the cannabis space and tattoo industry. And she's just the boss. She's like, there's a reason she has a fucking giant following and she kills it. And she's already thinking like, how am I going to transition out of this model thing? Like, I want to help facilitate deals for other girls. Like she's talking about potentially getting like a little content house in Hollywood where she can do shoots and whatever, whatever. She's just and like how using she, that influence. She's using yeah. What's her the influence. next step? You know what I mean? I love so, dude. I never even thought about that. That's fucking. That's killer, dude. That's like when you see like the sports guy, especially you get it from MMA references, like the randos being the fucking uh, commentators, or they're up mm-hmm. in the booth and shit. And yeah. Like, yeah. Whoa, Michael Keaton. It all up there? comes full circle. Yeah. Like, Alan Joe you know, and, shit. Yeah. And that, but that's the shit where you get the talent. You're getting this amazing talent that you can't train. That like and this now, is the industry shit. You're getting insight Seriously. when you listen to these people speak. You're getting insight that we have never had before. You know, listen to these guys commentate. You know, it's like whoa! I never even yeah, and like the way they can predict right here, what's coming next. Like that's going to happen right in the here, same you know in the, within <laughs> our industry. You know, we're going to be able to see foresight. You know, like imagine imagine a brand hiring a dope OG influencer to come in that has the respect of the younger influencers. So now when your marketing director is a former influencer like Mac Dizzle, and you're telling the girl with 60,000 followers like, yo, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. Now you got a quarterback. Now you got Chris Paul, you know what I mean? As your influencer, uh, creative, not creative director, marketing director, talking to your influencer team. Now your influencer team is like, oh my God, Matt Dizzle is sharing fucking value with me. And it's like, cool, now your brand is helping that influencer, not just paying them and doing all this shit. You got Mac Dizzle fucking helping them grow. And it's like, I think a lot just gets lost in like, everybody trying to push their agenda where it's like, we've once again, we've built our brand trying to help people get to their dreams. And that's something everybody has their own dreams and I want my dream and they're getting in the way of my dream and this influencer is getting fucking whatever and this brand is working with that person and blah, 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 self-conscious personal shit. Literally, if you just like spend your time helping other people and servicing other people and doing and whether it's creating knowledge, sharing knowledge, helping a brand, whatever, you'll be happy with life. You know what I mean? Like every time, anytime you're just self-serving, it's going to be negativity. It'll come full circle. You're like helping other people reach their shit. And at the end, all the value and knowledge you'll gain, you'll be able to use all that and you'll get to your goal. That's like our shit. You know what I mean? Like we're building everybody else's shit so that it helps us get to our goal in in the future. Because and Derek, high rise is the epitome of that. We, we are seeing that, you know, you, you, you can lay it out, but you can say it a hundred times. But the reality is, is we see the individuals you're investing in and you, that's that collective mindset. You know, one person is going to do well, but that's for everyone. 
you know it, it's a team effort you guys are M&M doing it and D12, you're doing it well you bring them up you bring them up asap yeah. rocky and fucking asap you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like you got to bring them up it's teamwork makes the dream work i don't give a fuck if one person blows up in my team more than i do there's no ego attached here we literally are a fucking team you know what I'm we, saying? we all get that ring, baby. We all get that ring. Dude, you know what I'm saying? We all rise. Somebody it's might a- be the fucking kill it in the finals and get the finals MVP, but that doesn't mean he was killing it in the whole playoffs or the whole season. You know what I mean? That's that's just, no, that's it. It took fine. the entire team to get you there. Fucking mm-hmm. A right, man. A right. Mm-hmm. Totally. Well, I think, well, man, put, that kind of caps it off. It's a fucking good hour conversation, man. I had a, a fucking great time. We got to do this again, Derek. I enjoyed yeah, talking. Whatever, Thank you, man. Whatever, guys. You know, for sure. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of insight, man. Very inspirational. It's a pleasure okay, listening right. to you speak. If anybody has anything to add to that in the comment section or you haven't checked out the High Rise Co. or any of the people underneath the brand, make sure you check them out. Instagram, High Rise Co. or The High Rise Co. Yeah, where can they find you, man? Where can they find you there? Uh, the High Rise Co. on IG, High Rise TV on IG. Got to type it all out because, you know, we all shadow banned. We lost High Rise Agency on high, on IG a couple of days ago. Or a couple really? weeks no ago. way. The agency yeah, we fucking lost page that, of like, all pages? We, so we got that. Um, Damn it. Fucking IG. High Rise TV on YouTube. Derek Fukuhara on IG. I mean... Anything high rise related, you guys could check it out. High rise Sweet podcast, fire soon. content, man. Sweet man, fire we got so, we got a wicked community behind us, man. So we will definitely fox with you, man. Thank you so much for being here, man. It was a pleasure. Let yeah, us know if you guys on. questions in the comments section and uh, hit that like button so we know to do these videos again. Absolutely. Hey, and thanks to all the growers out there. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have any of this community. We wouldn't have shit to smoke on. So I know there's a lot of growers out there in your guys' community. So we appreciate all the growers. Good day, right? Sweet man. Yeah, anybody else got anything else to add to that? Nah, you know, summed it up. Well done. Great Great talk tonight, boys. It's your boy Rob from CLTV, Pigeons 420, Mr. Grow It, and Derek from the motherfucker High Rise Go. Thank you, bro. See you next time. Peace. Peace.